We are three weeks away from the midterm elections, elections in which shockingly an estimated 300 GOP candidates who have disputed the results of the 2020 election are running for office. Yeah, six in 10 Americans have someone on their ballot who still ridiculously believes, or at least says, that the 2020 election was stolen. Now, one woman, one candidate, stands out from that far-right Republican crowd. She's a former TV news anchor from Arizona named Carrie Lake, who is now the Trump-endorsed GOP candidate for governor in that crucial swing state. In my view, she is the most dangerous candidate in America today. And one of the reasons she's so dangerous is the cynical, opportunistic, and yet successful way that she has become a rising star of the MAGA far right. Because before she entered the Republican primary for governor, before she spread COVID-19 misinformation, before she boosted Trump's big lie, before all of that, Carrie Lake was a Democrat. Here it is. Barack Obama, the senator from Illinois, the junior senator from Illinois, has won the Iowa caucuses. Carrie Lake, in fact, was all about a presidential candidate named Barack Obama. She actually registered as a Democrat on January the 4th, 2008, the day after Obama's surprise victory over Hillary Clinton in the Iowa caucuses. Campaign finance records even show a donation to Obama from one Kay Halperin. That's Carrie Lake's married name. Lake has claimed that donation, that donation was not from her, but rather from her family. And before she was a Democrat, she'd been a Republican voter. But even while she was still a registered Republican, in 2004, Carrie Halperin was giving money to the Democratic presidential nominee, John Kerry, who of course was lambasted at the time by the right for being a flip-flopper. Speaking of flip-floppers, Lake herself quit the Democratic Party and returned to the GOP fold in 2012. So it's almost impossible to know what Carrie Lake truly believes about anything, especially in her latest avatar as MAGA leader. She calls herself a Christian evangelical, but friends tell NBC News that Lake described herself as a Buddhist up until around 2015. Even after she switched her registration back to Republican in 2012, she didn't seem consumed back then with hatred for the evil left. She was all smiles with President Obama when she interviewed him in 2016 in her role as a local TV news anchor. An interview she seemed eager to promote. I'm going to have an interview with the president, and there's a handful of other reporters from around the country. I think there's six of us all together, and we're so excited. But then Trump got elected president, and something began to change. Lake started spreading conspiracy theories, building up her social media presence, and even joined the far-right site Parler. And so it's hard for me not to see Lake as anything other than a right-wing opportunist. As one former acquaintance, whose late husband was a Republican Arizona AG, as she told the Washington Post, Lake's newfound social media fame on the right became intoxicating, and her conservative views little by little brought her power and recognition that she had never felt before. By election night 2020, it was clear that Lake, the TV anchor, had gone full MAGA, questioning even Fox's decision to call Arizona for Biden. It's just yeah. with, well, we with are the taking, kind of powder keg situation we're in, it's kind of a dangerous we're thing. We're taking I think. our cues from Fox, the mothership. That's kind of what we do. So right now they've called it for, uh, for Joe Biden. And then she went from TV anchor to Republican candidate for governor in just a matter of months by turning to the hard right on abortion. Today, she praises an 1864 Arizona anti-abortion law with no exceptions for incest or rape. To the hard right on immigration, where she's now pledging as governor, she'll declare an invasion on our southern border. To the hard right on guns, where she said she won't recognize federal gun control legislation in her state and even taunting the feds to arrest her if they have a problem with it. Above all else, Lake won over Trump and the MAGA movement by denying the results of the 2020 election in Arizona, by spreading lies about that election, and of course, by denying COVID and the threat from COVID. She rallied people against masks and even called for the arrest of Dr. Anthony Fauci. I want to lock somebody down, and it's that liar, Dr. Fauci. 
It's terrifying, though maybe not surprising, that she has also called for the jailing of her Democratic opponent in the governor's race, Katie Hobbs, and speaks about Democrats in this way. We are truly fighting pure evil right now. It is evil what we're dealing with in this world. It's coming from the left, it's coming from their spokespeople in the media. These days, Carrie Lake embodies the anti-democratic, anti-science, anti-intellectual core of the modern Republican Party. Perhaps above all else, the anti-media core of the GOP. Lake has called for the jailing of journalists. Should lying journalists, propagandists be punished, she wrote on Twitter? I believe they should. This woman, this former television personality, has now become a cynical basher of television people. It's you're, always the conspiracy theorists in the media, no, which I'm, well, that's not I'm true. counting well, you as. That's well, that's not no, true you, at you all. Guys, that's not true no, at all. You've you've Carrie, Carrie, no, you've called Carrie, our, you've let's called be fair our election. On this. Let's be fair on this. Your man, you've Donald. You've called our election the big lie. This is our last question, Liam. We have to run, but thank you for your time. Just just answer me this one question. One, one more thank question, you. Carrie. Uh, well, no, I've already told you we're done. Thank well, you so well, much. Just... That guy's a complete nut. Seriously, a complete insane person. Wow. For someone who, a la Trump, owes her entire candidacy to her TV fame, she really hates the media. Or is that outrage, I don't know, all for show? As Elaine Godfrey wrote recently in The Atlantic, people who knew Lake view her evolution and her unflinching support for Trump as mostly an act. A former colleague said, she's a performer. And one former friend added, Lake read the room, took the temperature, and realized there's an anti-media sentiment for a lot of people. Rather than using her platform to fix it, she chose to throw fuel on that fire. Carrie Lake doesn't buy that many TV ads. She fights with the media. Her videographer husband records every exchange she has and puts it online. Photos of her literally vacuuming for Donald Trump conveniently go viral. And I know what you're thinking. She's bonkers. She's an attention seeker. Ignore her. But we can't. She's almost uniquely dangerous among far-right GOP candidates. Why? Number one, like Trump, she's certainly not a true believer. She's clearly not a true believer in my view. She believes in whatever she needs to, whenever she needs to, which makes it harder to pin her down. Number two, again, like Trump, and unlike, say, Ron DeSantis, she has charisma. She's media savvy. She knows what to say to get the base and the boss worked up. Carrie Lake, I tell you, she is incredible. She's been with us from the beginning on the election fraud and everything else, and she's going to be your next governor. But number three, the biggest reason that Carrie Lake is so dangerous, in my view, is unlike, say, MAGA gubernatorial candidates Doug Mastriano in Pennsylvania or Tudor Dixon in Michigan, who are both trailing in the polls, Carrie Lake has a strong chance of actually winning in Arizona. The most recent CBS News poll shows Lake tied with her Democratic opponent, Katie Hobbs. Meanwhile, there are echoes of Trump and 2016. Many in our media still frame Lake as if she's some normal Republican candidate and not a dangerous far-right extremist. In one recent National Sunday Show appearance, her lies about 2020 got her a single question and a follow-up at the end of the interview. A week later, in another Sunday show interview, when the same topic came up again, the big lie, she said something even more extreme while also turning the tables on the interviewer. If you lose, will you accept that? I'm going to win the election and I will accept that result. The real issue, Dana, is that the people don't trust our elections. They haven't since 2000. I'm a reporter. I've been sitting on your side of the desk for a long time. And since 2000, we have Americans who don't trust our elections. This is a woman who knows what she's doing and who is running rings around a lot of her interviewers. Lake is smart, she's savvy, and she also knows how to use Zoom filters to come across as soft, moderate, unthreatening. The thing is, though, she is a far-right extremist. She is, in fact, a threat to our democracy. And there's nothing semi about her fascism. Yes, her fascism. This is a woman who has called for a total ban on abortion, the punishing of journalists, and the imprisonment of her political opponents, who supported overturning the last election, and now says she won't accept the results of the next one. 
What else do we call that if not fascism? And what else do we call Arizona's Carrie Lake other than the most dangerous candidate in America? Joining me now to discuss this further is Atlantic staff writer Elaine Godfrey, who profiled Carrie Lake for the magazine earlier this month, and Jason Stanley, a Yale professor and author of How Fascism Works. Thank you both for joining me on the show. Elaine, let me start with you. You spoke with Carrie Lake for that Atlantic article. Uh, we talked a moment ago about her husband filming pretty much all of her interactions with the media. What was that like? And what would Carrie Lake's campaign be without the media as a foil? So I did speak with Carrie Lake. I didn't get a chance to fully interview her because it was sort of billed to me. I mean, they kept sort of teasing an interview with her, promising an interview, um, and it never really panned out. I, I ended up introducing myself to her outside an ASU football tailgate um, and just sort of trying to convince her to talk to me. And it, it is a really surreal experience because, you know, her husband comes in with his camera and he gets, you know, within a couple feet of you. Um, her team sort of huddled around us. She sort of berated me about how the Atlantic is biased and doesn't treat Trump fairly and, and she shouldn't trust me. Um, but I, I mean, this is what they want, right? These are the interactions that they want. They want to try to embarrass reporters. They want to look like they're owning the libs. Um, and, and it is really hard to interview people that are just trying to get uh, you know, a clip, a photo op, something to, yeah. to make fun of you with online. It's been a very cynical but successful strategy so far for her. Uh, Jason, Carrie Lake has been called Donald Trump in heels, and she has tweeted praise for another hard right leader, Italy's prime minister-elect, Giorgia Maloney. How concerned are you about the gender-washing aspect to Western fascism, that she gives a smiling, Zoom-filtered, telegenic female face to some horrifically racist far-right and authoritarian views. It was bound to happen. It's been happening in France with uh, Le Pen. Uh, it's been happening with uh, in Italy, as you say, with Maloney, who has appointed some of the uh, most extreme fascists as uh, Speaker of the House and head of the President of the Senate. Are two extreme fascists. Uh, it's time, as the Atlantic article said, uh, Carrie La Lake. One is one is tempted to uh, take her extreme comments uh, seriously, but not literally. But hopefully, what we've learned is that whole description uh, is wrong. Uh, we should have been taking this literally all along. This talk of of jailing opponents with a smile. Uh, we really have to be concerned here because what we've seen uh, from Trump is that the rhetoric does become reality. Yes. And Elaine, let's listen to some of Carrie Lake's rhetoric at a recent rally talking about President Biden. I promise you this, as your governor, Arizona, I will be the biggest pain in the ass Joe Biden's ever experienced. Is that the platform, the plank for the GOP now, epitomized by candidates like Lake? Is that her particular selling point, owning libs? Yeah, I mean, it is. I, I, think, I, I think that, and I've written about this before, I think for even, even for people who don't believe the election was stolen, um, I think there are some true believers out there. I, I don't know that Carrie Lake is one of them. Um, but, but even for people who say it but don't necessarily believe it, they are they are giving a middle finger to the establishment, to Joe Biden, to the to the radical left, right? Like yeah. the, these are the vibes that they're that they're selling uh, to voters. And Jason, when we look at the news coverage of her, those Sunday show interviews I mentioned, for example, this is a woman who talks about locking up her opponents, who talks about uh, punishing journalists, who talks about not accepting the next election result or the last one. Shouldn't that be front and center in any mainstream TV interview, any coverage of this woman? Are we in danger of normalizing her as we normalized Trump in 2016? Uh, she's normalized. <laughs> uh, we're not in danger. It's, it's happening. Uh, this is the problem uh, that journalism has had. And let's be clear, I don't think any of these people believe that the, the election was stolen. Ted Cruz doesn't believe the election is stolen. None of these, these are highly educated people with successful careers. None of them believe it. It's all about power. They're straightforwardly lying. And that, that's the attraction. The attraction is the, the big lie as a kind of loyalty oath, the kind of thumbing your nose at reality, liberals and the press. Uh, the, this is 
Uh, just a red alarm. Fi- it's a five alarm fire for democracy. We've been here before. Uh, and the jur- and to treat her as a normal candidate, to treat the GOP really uh, as normal in these circumstances is the last thing journalists can, should be doing. Journalists need to be telling the truth about these candidates. Uh, and the truth does not mean uh, just uh, t- uh, being reporting what they say and reporting what the Democrat says. Uh, it means saying what's going on. Elaine, even if she loses next month, Palin style, she's not going away, is she? She could still end up as Trump's vice presidential pick even come 2024. He loves her, doesn't he? He loves her. Um, from from everything that we've heard, Donald Trump loves her. He loves that she stays on message. She's committed to the bit, um, as I say in my piece. Um, yeah, I think what I heard again and again from people that I talk to who are who know Carrie Lake, who who spend time with her, who spend time with Donald Trump, um, they say she, even if she she loses, she's already won. Right? She 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 could run. She could have her own sort of show on a pro Trump network. She could end up being Trump's running mate. I, I think that is a serious possibility being discussed in Trump circles. They love her. So I, I really don't think she's going away because I, I think the, the the right has seen what they've they've gotten a hold of. They've seen that she's she has this ability to be a star. I think that is the right phrase. She's committed to the bit. Uh, Jason, one last question for you. If Carrie Lake is governor of Arizona, she wins and she's governor, what do the next two years look like for Arizonans? And then what does the 2024 election result look like in Arizona? She's not going to certify a Democratic win in Arizona in 24. She's just not, is she? No. So you have to look at these three governor's races in Michigan, Pennsylvania and Arizona and see them as just uh, the, this is the end of democracy in those states. The, the Democrats will need 270 electoral votes. You can just subtract Arizona's electoral votes from that. And so the Democrats will need more from somewhere else. Uh, so, so this is just uh, this is just we're in the medium point. We're not at the beginning of the end of American democracy. We're at the medium point, uh, at the midpoint. Uh, this is a fascist social and political movement, uh, which is about power. Uh, it's about winning and destroying the opponents and ending their possibility ever to uh, be uh, be viable. Uh, and that's what we're facing. Uh, in Arizona. We're also facing a kind of one-upsmanship about extremism and policies uh, that we see in, we've seen in Texas uh, and we will see follow in Arizona, targeting of universities, public schools, and the press.